Hey, climatologists, welcome back. This is the Earth Changing Climate Unit. This is a unit for sixth grade scientists. This is lesson 11 out of 12, so we're almost at the very end. We're going to be exploring climate change solutions a little bit more. We did this in lesson nine and lesson 10, and now in lesson 11, we're going to actually take what we've learned and come up with a way to really get our community involved to understand about the things that we can do as a community to address these issues. So for this this lesson, today you'll need someone to talk to and something to write down your ideas on. You're actually going to be writing a blog post, so having some paper to write your ideas is great, but you can also type them up if you'd prefer to. So we're also going to be looking one more time at the article called Climate Change Solutions that we started reading in Lesson 9 and 10. So grab your copy of that as well. So what we're trying to understand right now in this part of the unit is what can we do? Like what can be done to stop the carbon dioxide and methane that's been building up in our atmosphere because of human activities? And so I wanted to show you this really fun screenshot. This is actually from the Earth Changing Climate Sim when it's on human activities mode. And if you look at the picture here on the left, you can see that there is uh, a gray line and there is also a black line and the same is happening at the picture on the right they're also both at time 43 and so we're looking here at what the, the black line represents temperature on both of them and the gray line represents carbon dioxide and if you look there's a couple of changes like this one the gray line crosses over the black line on this one it does not so there's a difference there um, on this one, um, the gray line, it says it's at 480 parts per million. On this one, it says that the gray line is at 340 parts per million, so that's less. So let's look at this prompt up here. It says, one of the sim tests was run with the combustion per person set to high. The other one was run with combustion per person set to medium. Which is which? So think back to your experiences with the sim that we've been exploring for the last little bit in lesson nine and 10 and even before then. And when we were on the human activities mode, we were able to change the combustion per person. So which one of these do you think would represent that? And so the two clues that we have here are carbon dioxide and temperature. And so how does the combustion per person affect how much carbon dioxide is in the atmosphere? And if you, re if you remember, what we've been learning is that the more human activities there are, the more combustion there is, the more carbon dioxide ends up in the atmosphere because carbon dioxide is a byproduct of the chemical reaction of combustion. It takes in fuel and oxygen and combines it to create energy and also a byproduct of carbon dioxide, which has become a problem in our atmosphere because what we discovered in lesson six is that when carbon dioxide interacts with energy that's trying to exit Earth's system, it can redirect it back to Earth's surface, which then gets reabsorbed and it increases the amount of energy absorbed on Earth's surface, which raises the amount of temperature and also reduces how much ice is on our surface. And that's what we're trying to figure out right now. So we're kind of at the end of this unit and it's exciting to celebrate all the things that we've figured out. So when we're looking at these two, I'd love for you to jot down which one you think is set for medium and which one you think is set for high. Or instead of writing it or jotting it down, you can just tell a friend or a family member or someone that's at your house and um, tell them what you think. Did you write down your idea? If you need to pause the video, you can. But let's go ahead and, and celebrate together what we were thinking. So when I look at this one, I can see that um, 480 par parts per million is more than 340 parts per million as shown in the graph on the right. So I know that when there's more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, it's there because there's more combustion per person. So I would, I would say that the one on the left is the parts per million is higher, I think this is where the combustion per person is set to high. And I think this one is set to medium. And we can see from the sim, it shows that there's a difference between the temperature as well. So we've discovered that the temperature will increase as the carbon dioxide increases. So let's take everything that we've learned so far in this unit and let's, let's finally do the thing that Dr. Irene Lee asked us to do. She asked us to create a blog post that can help people understand some solutions to the problem. 
In the last part, she asked you to write something that just explained what was happening in the atmosphere with carbon dioxide and methane increasing. But now we want to really empower our community to make some changes. So in the last lessons, we've been talking about carbon dioxide and methane, and we've talked about how there are two ways that we can really combat or change the things that are happening in our atmosphere. The first one is having solutions that stop making so much carbon dioxide and methane into the atmosphere. And then there's also solutions that are about removing the carbon dioxide and methane that are already there. So we've looked at solar power as being one solution that's going to stop the amount of carbon dioxide going into the atmosphere because it allows there to be less combustion per person. We talked about bikes and transit as, as one solution because that also reduces the combustion per person. And we can also capture carbon dioxide at a power plant. So if it's already getting released into the atmosphere, um, we can pull it back. And there's a couple of different ideas about capturing it and putting it underground. We also talked about methane and we can capture methane from cows or capture methane from power plants. We also talked about reforestation. Reforestation is planting trees, which is another natural way of just pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. Okay, so in this lesson 11, what I'd like you to do is take a look at these questions. And after you've chosen your one solution that you really wanna focus on, answer each of these questions. You can either write your ideas down on paper or you can talk to a family member or a friend about the different things you're thinking about. And then when you make your final post, then you'll have something that you're ready to share with us. So the first one is which solution did you choose? So choose one of the five. What kind of solution is it? So there's a couple of options here. It could be a solution that produces less carbon dioxide, or it could be a solution that removes carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, or it could be something that removes methane from the atmosphere. Now, if you have another idea of a solution that you think would help, then um, go ahead and, and add that to your blog post along with one of these. So then there's three questions that you'll need to answer before you get started. Explain why the solution is needed. Why would this solution be necessary? And the second thing you'll need to answer is explain how the solution works. And then the last thing is, is this a good solution? Why or why not? And so take some of your ideas that you're thinking about right now and maybe write them down, talk to a friend, and then you'll have your final thing that you're gonna do for Irene Lee, which is actually write a blog post. Okay, so I wanna help you prepare to write this post. So. A couple of things. First, the directions are write a blog post that describes and explains the solution that you read about in the Climate Change Solutions article, and then explain the solution, how it would affect climate, climate change, and why it is needed. And I've included a word bank on this screen because I think if you use all of these words in your explanation, then you will have something that will really help your community understand why this is a problem and how the solution can really help fix it. So the words are absorb, atmosphere, carbon dioxide, energy, enter, exit. Think about how you're gonna be explaining to them about energy entering or exiting Earth's system. Methane, redirect, and surface. Now, if your solution is only focused on carbon dioxide, it would be okay to not use the word methane in your, in your explanation. Or vice versa, if you're just talking about something to do with methane, you don't have to talk about carbon dioxide. But you should really try to include all the other words. Okay, so it's time now for you to go off and write your blog post. And this is an exciting moment because you can write it down or you can just find someone in your community and talk to them about what you would say. And if you have someone in your house to talk to, that's great. But you could also call a friend or a family member who lives somewhere else and just tell them about what you've learned in this unit. Okay, so I have one final thing to share with you. And this is an example that a student wrote about using the climate change solution that they chose is about solar power and solar panels. And so I'm going to go ahead and read it for you. And I'm hoping that it will give you some ideas about what you can write about in your own blog post. Okay, here's what it says. One solution to climate change is to get more of our energy from solar power. Most electrical energy comes from combustion, which means burning fuels like coal. If we put solar panels on our houses, less of our electricity will come from combustion. Combustion is one of the causes of Earth's increased temperature because combustion releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere. 
Carbon dioxide stops energy from leaving by redirecting energy that would have exited the Earth's system. So more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere means more energy is entering than exiting. Earth's surface absorbs the extra energy and this makes Earth's average temperature increase. Earth's increasing temperature is causing ice to melt, oceans to rise, and dangerous weather events. If we decrease combustion by putting solar panels on our houses, we can reduce climate change. So now it's your opportunity to go and write your very own blog post and make sure that you're talking about the solutions that you've discovered. And I'm really eager to hear some of your responses. So I hope that you'll um, share those with your science teacher or with your friends and family members. Okay, see you next time in lesson 12.